hey everybody welcome back to my channel my name is sabrina and today we're continuing on with beacon pines let's find out what nuncreed knows there was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all yes it subtle, but luca could sense something eating away at him you can see shame there was a shame lurking behind those eyes a deep sadness if Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rollo, maybe yeah. he could help. Messing around with Valentine's. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. Both of you? When you went missing? Not exactly. I was hiding in the dumpster. What were you doing in there? First off, we were just looking around. Someone's chaining a yellow suit came and dumped something on us. We both got scared and ran. It's the last I saw him. By some garbage? That's why you don't go skulking around someone's dumpster. I think I think it was a body. I'm sure it was just some trash. And there was a name tag. It said deep engineering. Mr. shoulders slumped. I wish you wouldn't have said that. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Why do you have to? I tried with him. God knows to try to keep you safe. To take a step back, but Van Horn just can't help yourselves, can you? The exact what? Shove, Out of my hands now. With a mechanical hiss. Am I As dead? Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule, plummeting at gravity's wind. Luca winced and pressed his hands to the wall. Yeah, I'm dead again. For impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth. Oh stop. no! He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. The end. Okay, we are dead. Wait. No, this isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. Okay. We'll do strange instead. Well, Time to bust out the strange. Beck stared, and it's the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. Stop being a weirdo. At the sight of Iggy taunting Beck, something in Luca snapped. Iggy's smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself in. Iggy's oh. clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. Iggy's voice began to slur as he. <gasps> that was intense. The person at the warehouse, the strange ooze, and what it did to Iggy. Was yeah. Lulu caught up in all of this? Yes. Took the words right out of my mouth. Hey there, buddies. You startled me. Just look. We're just helping to find Rolo. Oh, yes. Really? Where is Wuzzy? Fuller turned around in the woods. I'm starting to get that impression. Oh, that's a relief. You should scurry along before you get lost yourselves. Yeah, come on, Beck. We can't wait to introduce you to Rolo. Well, that reminds me. Look, your grandmother is looking for you. She was? She was worried sick. You should march straight home, I guess. Bex, your folks might get worried too. I'll walk you home. Ah, uh, I need to talk to Nellie about work Beck anyways. Toward Luca. I'll introduce you tomorrow. I'm glad he's okay. Rolo was safe. But was he really? A wave of relief washed over Luca. But was he really? Which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Thank you. Gran is going to kill me. Also accurate. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4. Our harvest awaits. Why does that sound sinister? Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, stealing himself for Gran's wrath. Hmm. 
Okay. Our room. Luca was alone. The house was empty. Sure, Grand's not back yet. Guess that's a good thing. Luca was sitting by the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. What? His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between what? holding it at arm's length. He hurried over. His interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice. But I respect it. The pond what? began to freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated huh? across the still surface with an alarming speed. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. I'm Sorry, also confused. Kido. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dad, look out! His father casually wound the reel. Uh? None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go. What? Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you, you have to run. The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. What? A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. What? Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. I'm trying I'm trying to figure out if that was just a nightmare. Luca's eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Faintly, he could hear Rollo amongst the noise. Listen. Lolo's voice was coming through more clearly now. Down here. But some words were still just static. Yes. I think I'm underground. Kind of. At least. Trust. He's. Hold on, the someone's coming. Silent. Luca held still, waiting for a response, his pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Okay. Lolo's voice began to fade. Okay, treehouse. With that, the signal died for good. Okay. We have to go... The antenna. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. Sounds good. Luca heard a group of footsteps approaching. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. Perfect. So we all understand our rules. This wasn't the original plan. Shifting his eyes to one side. <laughs> well, the danger persists. Um, what's about you? Long, quiet breath. Right, you can count on me. I just wish we could have made the deal with the heiress Valentine. Her resources would still come in handy. So we have no time to contact her after the call this morning. How's Luca holding up? He's fine. 
we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that this is all I know very well. This is all for, but we have no choice. Operation Spark Plug has a new objection. Uh, objective. Are we in agreement? A determined look. Good. We'll reconvene at the festival. She knows we're there. Oh, hi. Dawn, you scared me. How long have you been there? A bat called Dawn. Oh, just a few minutes. I saw us and left. I gave you great tools. Time. Whatever. Organize. I can mention the festival. I heard that too. He's been recently. Anything strange? She got a phone call this morning and rushed out the door. She's even furious or terrified or both. Careful out there. I think we might be in the middle of a scoop of the lifetime. Are you? Aren't you coming on? Okay. I just think it's hilarious that they called a bat dawn. shared a mischievous grin. Memorable. I was just curious what they did. Back up. Anything? Luca could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. He strained to hear as a muffled voice began. Back? <laughs> Fear gripped Luca's throat. <laughs> Luca stared at the ground for a moment, trying to the figure Is he? slowly from behind the rock, Icky? revealing itself to Luca. Icky. <laughs> Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. To be fair, it's not us. You gonna be my savior? Yeah, yeah. Power of friendship. <laughs> There's no time. They're after me. They chased me all the way through the Leap Woods. Ah, Rolla. They're after me. They've been chasing me, yelling questions at me. Asking me more and more threatening. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Formal chat. Of course, of course, of course, of course. We have a problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
all of them. You were right, they're saying the same thing, but like, the creepy. Iggy slumped to his knees. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Follow my lead. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rolo had constructed his MCDC, the Mission Control Defense Cannon. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward. No can do. Help. They're chasing me. Pretty honky question there. He's sick, really sick, Luca. He told me Rolo was okay, and I guess police rest saying that's a lie. Hurtful thing to say, Luca. Kerr's smile faltered. <laughs> there. Luca's grip tightened on the MCDC. Okay. Okay. Doesn't matter. We will. We will succeed. We Luca's will succeed. Mind raced. He was caught in a trap. What do you do when there's no hope? You have nothing. He wiped his cheeks with a You have nothing to lose when there's no hope. Do, Luca? Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Fight. He swung the mission control defense camera. When there is nothing and left. Confidently at the smirking face of William when Kirk. there is nothing left to lose. That is the most dangerous person. Luca summoned his most insolent demeanor. Rolo sends his regards. Kerr turned his back. With and a nonchalant this. wave of the hand, he made his exit. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse, Luca looked to Iggy. The end. That escalated quickly. Yes. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here. Let's put a pin in this for now. We've done all of these. Here you go. I'm going to pop in and do struggles. About struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let me go! Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. Okay. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Chapter 3. Okay. Everything's fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Okay. Oh, uh, Rolo had things to do. I sir, just poked around town. Two batches to drop off. Mm hmm Okay, so I have to deliver jam to Mr. Tolliver. And, okay. I want some more. Other ex... Okay. Okay. So we go off. A phone call. So she's making a phone call. Simple matter. We both probably need solving. Okay.
Sorry about Roxy, so annoying. Good news, some boring drawers today. What did you find? Something happened to someone there. I knew it was aliens. No. Zombies? No. Alien zombies? <laughs> Rolo. Deliver these to town first. Can you catch up after? Okay. Yeah, you shouldn't be talking about it here. Meet me at the treehouse tonight. Me and mission control. Okay. The road leading to Beacon Pines was long, a sort of. Okay, so we just never go that way. Who's my favorite little jam runner? She leaned forward and pinched Lucas' cheek. Your all skin bones. She is, it's just, I understand. I know, I taught your mom how to cook back in the day. You may not even remember. Just help out at the diner. Picture is over here. What happened to Eleanor? Break. Okay. We have a new charm. Shifted the basket uncomfortably. Mrs. Patelli looked at the cloth and inspected the jam. It's even some of my name she on it. How thoughtful. Out her jars of jam. Will do. Okay. Valent had a way of making questions seem like demands. Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that mm -hmm. if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. Yes. Okay. Mr. Wilder averted his gate. Okay. My thing is, where is Trolliver? Luca for a moment, then nodded in agreement. Yeah, she's busy Luca today. Luca handed the jam to Mr. Nuncreed, and he nestled it with both hands. Okay, got it. Now we gotta find the last one. There we go. Meticulously shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one 
apple. With a yelp. There you go. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. Uh huh. He leaned in a bit further. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for. He reached forward and snapped up the jars of jam. Okay, not suspicious wings. at all. He leaned in for a final whisper. Okay, done. Ooh, Bex. Hey, you. Don't think. Pineapple. Why? Twelve. Perfect. Follow me. Who are you? Anyone ever tell you ask too many questions? Just keep it up, okay? Alright, so we're gonna follow her in the next episode. I do wanna thank you all so much for watching. If you're not already, feel free to subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!